Welcome to today's daily Bible reading for June 8th. We'll begin in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may be discerned between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And the one woman was, and the one woman said, O my lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me, while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living son is the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So King Solomon was king over all Israel, and there were the princes which he had, Azariah the son of Zadok the priest, Elihoreph 
and Ahiah, the sons of Shisha, scribes, Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, the recorder, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the host, and Zadok and Abathar were the priests, and Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the officers, and Zabad, the son of Nathan, was principal officer and the king's friend, and Ishar was over the household, and Adoram, the son of Abda, was over the tribute. And Solomon had twelve officers over all Israel, which provided victuals for the king and his household, each man his month and a year made provision. And these are their names, the son of Hur in Mount Ephraim, the son of Decker in Machaz, and in Shabalim and Beth Shemesh, and alone Beth Hanan, the son of Hesed in Arubath, to him pertained Succo, and all the land of Hefer, the son of Abinadab in all the region of Dor, which had Taphath, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Bana, the son of Ahilud, to him pertained Tanak and Megiddo, and all Beth Sheen, which is by Zar Zartana, beneath Jezreel from Beth Sheen to Abel Meloah, even unto the place that is beyond Jochmin. The son of Geber in Ramoth Gilead, to him pertained the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead. To him also pertained the region of Argob, which is in Beth Shain, three score great cities with walls and brazen bars. Ahinadab, the son of Ido, had Mahanim. Ahimez was in Naphtali. He also took Basmith, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Banna, the son of Hushai, was in Asher and Elah. Jehoshaphat, the son of Para, was in Issachar. Shimi, the son of Elah, was in Benjamin. Geber, the son of Uri, was in the country of Gilead, in the country of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and of Og, king of Bashan, and he was the only officer which was in the land. Judah and Israel were many, as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's provision for one day was thirty measures of fine flour and threescore measures of meal, ten fat oxen and twenty oxen out of the pastures and a hundred sheep beside harts and roebucks and fallow deer, and fatted fowl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side the river, from Tipsa even to Azza, over all the kings on this side the river, and he had peace on all sides around about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had forty thousand stalls of horses for his chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen. And those officers provided victual for King Solomon, and for all that came unto King Solomon's table. Every man in his month, they lacked nothing. Barley also, and straw for the horses, and dromedaries brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Israelite, and Haman, and Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was on all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. And now we'll go to Acts, chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days 
when the number of the disciples was multiplied there arose a murmuring of the grecians against the hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said is it not reason that we should leave the word of god and serve tables wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word and the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose stephen a man full of faith and of the holy ghost and philip a, and prochorus and nicanor and timon and parmenas and nicholas a proselyte of antioch whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid their hands on them and the word of god increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith and stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people then there arose certain of the synagogue which is called the synagogue of the libertines and cyrenians and alexandrians and of them of cilicia and of asia disputing with stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake then they suborned men which said we have heard him speak blasphemous words against moses and against god and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this jesus of nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which moses delivered us and all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel now we'll go to psalm chapter 126 verse 1 when the lord turned again the captivity captivity of zion we were like them that dream then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing then said they among the heathen the lord hath done great things for them the lord hath done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity o lord as the streams in the south they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 26 and 27. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil and in his lips there is as a burning fire.